Hey guys, welcome back to Ozarks Prepared. We're going to teach you not only how to prepare, but how to survive and to thrive. If that's something you're interested in, be sure and subscribe to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the 10 skill sets that every prepper needs to learn. Let's get to it. Okay, now these are in no particular order, but these are 10 things that I believe that every prepper needs to learn and needs to really try to become an expert at. So number one is bushcrafting. You know, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there and a lot of do-it-yourself videos out there. And these are things that I really um, would encourage you to go watch because if something does happen and it does hit the fan, this is a skill that's not only going to help make your survival easier, but it could make it to where people will come to you and you could trade things that you need in order for your knowledge. But uh, bushcraft, I mean, things like shelters, chairs, utensils, tools, anything that you're used to getting now from stores that somebody else makes from you, if you can learn to take your natural resources around you and make it, you're going to be that much valuable to your family, to your friends, and in society in general if something happens. So definitely uh, take the time to learn how to bushcraft, learn how to make things yourself. Number two is navigation. Navigation is a lost art. Um, do you know how to navigate using a compass? Do you know how to navigate using a topographical map? Uh, using ranger beads? Can you uh, navigate using the stars? These are all things that if something does happen and it is a major disaster or a major catastrophe, you might have to leave and you might have to leave over a long distance. And being able to take care of the, not only the, you know, common sense navigation, but the navigation when everything else has failed is going to put you ahead of the game. If you can get wherever you're going, no matter what's going on around you, you're going to be that much more valuable. Number three is hydration. So if you are on the move um, and you're in a place that maybe you're not very familiar with, you don't know what bodies of water are around, are you gonna be able to locate water? Do you know what kind of plants have water? What kind of root systems have water? Do you know how to read the terrain around you that might be able to lead you to water? And once you, uh, once you get there, you're gonna be able to collect that water and then you're gonna be able to purify that water. Being able to go out and not only find the water, but make it safe to drinking, wow, I mean, you gotta have that, you know, we can't go more than three days without it. So if that's a skill you can use, you're gonna put yourself ahead of the game in a catastrophe. So number four is gathering. So are you gonna be able to go out there and track your food? Once you track it, are you gonna be able to hunt it? Are you gonna be able to trap it? Um, you're gonna be able to go fishing and secure uh, some food that way. Are you going to be able to forage the things around you? Are you going to be able to garden? Being able to gather food, whether it's hunting or foraging or gardening, is going to be paramount in the end times. So just because you're able to get food now, or you're able to garden now, or you have a garden set up, make sure you have seeds or heirlooms or whatever sitting around in case you have to move or in case that is ruined in the initial catastrophe. Being able to provide for yourself and your loved ones is huge, so learn everything you can about gathering your own food. Number five is cooking your own food. So you've gathered it, can you field dress it? Um, can you preserve it? Do you know how to can the food? Do you know how to cook the food, depending on what kind of food it is? Um, do you have organizational skills? Can you rotate the food that's gonna go bad the quickest up front and the, the food that you've preserved to go long term a little bit later. Um, just being able to catch the food is a very, very small part. Now you're going to have to learn how to preserve it, how to save it for later, how to make it healthy for your whole group to eat. So don't only learn how to provide it, learn how to fix it safely. Number six is health and fitness. Um, this is a, obviously a subject near and dear to me after my open heart surgery, but you got to be in shape. Anything that is bad for you now, just put it aside. Um, there's a lot of bad habits out there, and I'm not just talking about drinking and smoking. I'm talking about a lot of the processed foods and some other things that uh, if it runs in your family and your family has issue with it, you need to address it now. So start eating healthy now. Start doing things for your body that it needs now with the proper hydration, the proper working out. Um, the, uh, the proper diets 
And then, of course, you want to learn first aid. If somebody does uh, pass out or faint or have a, a bigger issue, are you going to be able to, to handle it? Can you do CPR? Can you stop blood from flowing? Um, so many things that we need to learn on the health and fitness. Everybody in your group needs to have a first aid course. I mean, everybody needs to get their CPR uh, designation. That is not very hard to do. But the more you can learn in that area, and the health, the fitness, the first aid, the easier it's gonna make you. Because if you think that in a catastrophe situation, everything's gonna go perfect, and nobody's gonna be hurt, and that's not something you need, you're in for a rude awakening. So take the time to do that. All right, next is security. So security, do you have the weapons? Do you have the guns, the knives, the things you need to be able to survive the bad people out there? Um, can you do tactical defense? Can you make sure that your place, your bug out location, your home, or even if you're traveling, that your perimeter is secured? Um, do you have the situational awareness, which is huge? Can you tell if somebody is a threat or they are a friendly? Um, these are all things that are very important to learn when your safety and your family's safety um, is there. And then finally, when it needs to, can you become that gray man? Can you disappear? Can you become stealthy to uh, get through a situation where you might have to when you're vastly outnumbered? So um, being able to take care of your security and the needs and security of your group is huge. So definitely have somebody designated in that area who can be your expert if it does hit the fan. All right, next is handyman. Um, there are so many skills that's gonna be needed and it's going to be very valuable to you in the end of the world situation. Um, learn now how to weld. Learn uh, how to do some plumbing, how to do some electrical work, how to do carpentry, how to do blacksmith. Learn how to be a handyman. Even if you got to take classes or go volunteer your time for a construction company who just needs help, if you can just learn how to do the basic things, that's going to pay dividends because at the end of the world situation, you're not going to be able to call a handyman or a plumber. It's something you're going to have to take care of yourself. So take the time now to get those few skills you're going to need to at least be able to do the basic things. But your goal is to be able to do the expert things or at least have one of those people in your group. Number nine is communication. A lot of people undervalue communication and the end of the world situation and while it's good to be self-sufficient and be able to live by yourself and with yourself having access to what is happening in the outside world is going to be wonders for you not only your mental and physical health but the safety of your whole group so know how to work a uh, ham radio get licensed in that or have somebody in your group learn different languages um, especially if you're in a, a spot that's got a, a, a lot of population from a different language like Spanish or Chinese or whatever, learning some of that could, could you would be surprised how that could help bridge the gap in the end of the world situation and bring more people into your group. Um, learn Morse code, take the time to do that. Um, just have different crank radios that you can use. Whatever you can have to not only listen to the outside world, but to communicate with them, if need be, is gonna be a psychological boost for you. So definitely take the time to learn how to do that. All right, number 10, and I talk about it a lot, is being able to start a fire. Fire does a lot. Fire cooks your food, fire purifies your water, fire keeps away animals at bay, keeps you warm. Learning how to use your natural surroundings to make a fire, whether it's rubbing two sticks together or if you have lighters and you're prepared, knowing what tinders in your area, knowing what wood uh, burns the fastest and burns the longest. Um, just knowing how to start a fire, not, I mean, fire is life-saving, but not only that, it's, it's like having a blanket on a cold night. It just gives you peace of mind, and peace of mind in a uh, survival situation goes a long, long way. Well, there you have it, guys. The 10 things I believe that preppers should be focused on now as far as improving their skill set. A lot of people uh, focus on the, well, on the, uh, the things you can buy at Walmart or the things you can stockpile up. And very few people tend to focus on the skill set of prepping. 
and having the knowledge and having the skill set to do these things are far more valuable than the stores of preps you're going to have. Now those are important and we all have them and I have them, but I'd much rather have somebody who could do nine or ten of these things or an expert in one or two of them than somebody who's got a ton of preps because preps will run out and after that it's going to be your knowledge and if you can secure your own. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, please give us that thumbs up and share it. And as always, guys, remember, prepare, survive, and thrive.